we're going to feel for the temporal fusion line. And I'm going to mark out now the little union there of the orbital crest. That's my square, one centimeter square. And here on the bone, there's no artery. Okay? So you want to palpate ideally the branch here. And if there's no pulse, you know that you're not going to get a bruise. Perpendicular injection. Bone. Okay, now, you'll assess the minute you go down whether or not that temple is like a teacup or a tea saucer. Okay, and she has a cup there. She's quite deep. So her volume requirement will be greater. The difference between the two is typically my volume parameters will be between 0 0.5, 0 0.7, depending on depth. Aspiration, at least three seconds, and then gently inject 0.6 cc. For her, I'll choose 0 0.6. And look at the pace of the plunger, it's nice and steady. And you can see here now how it's already starting to hydrodissect down like this. I think 0 0.5 is actually enough for her because she's feeling really beautifully. And then whenever you come out, come out slowly, okay? Nice and gentle. And the reason why you come out slow is because you don't have any blood. The reason why you don't have any blood is because if there's seven layers there, as I entered through seven layers, I must have penetrated something vascular, surely. Now only now it starts to come, because if the bleed is on level two, and I came out of the seventh floor on the ceiling, it takes time for that smoke to get through the building to the surface. And then all I do is a very gentle mold and massage, just paddle it down. And by the time you've flattened it out in the temple like this, You should have here now brow lifting, support of the lateral upper eyelid, lateral canthus, and also reduction in crow's feet lines. But also the eye, the infra orbit may look better as well. Let's have a little look. It's quite incredible. Look at the brow lifting immediately. Um, look at the temporal hollowing on this side, how she has a hole. This has now become nicely convex. Look in the, in the camera, sweetheart. There you go. Right, now, those of you that are at the front, or you can see the screen. Look how interesting the shape of her eye has changed. Mm -hmm. Can you see how she became more feline shaped, mm -hmm. like more uh, feminized on this side? You know, now this eye looks like it's rotated down. She looks sleepy on this side, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, good. Also, look everybody, the cheekbone is appearing like it has increased height. She's lost the sulcus in the, uh, in the lateral part of the uh, uh, the lateral canthus, and also, if you show me some animation, if you lift the brow and relax, and now show me a huge smile. She has crow's feet lines and bulging, and here, look, she is resisting deformation. 0 0.5 cc voluma. Hey, that's expensive injection, isn't it? That's a lot of prod, that's, a, that's an investment. For America, it's a, it costs a fortune. So, is it worth, though, 0 0.5 cc to achieve all of that? It is, right? So, that, you know what you do? You add value, show the patient. After one injection, give them the mirror and say, look what you've achieved after one. The exciting part is you have another 25 to go. Okay? Right. Have a lie down. So, now we're going to um, do cheekbone uh, support, but also we're going to start to also myomodulate the orbicularis oculi muscle and uh, start to lift the corner of the mouth as well. So, feel for the little notch here. That's where the notch is. I'm going to pull the ligament back. So, this door is closing. You want to open, and you want to inject in front of it. And then you want to push 
the, uh, the voluma against the base of the ligament. So, open the door, inject from above, because it's a woman, you want a high cheekbones, and you want to go down onto the cheekbone, okay? Please forgive me for not aspirating, but there's nothing there. 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 cc. Look how I'm holding between my index finger and thumb. Okay, thank you. Take your uh, product and now mold it like laterally. So look, I'm sticking it into the ligament like this. And I, I don't let go until I can feel it just subsiding away nicely. Finger on the inferior border of the zygoma. Pushing the voluma into the upper border of my finger to create a high definition cheekbones. So look at Jane, how she has this dramatic drop off, you see, like a sulcus effect in the cheek. And so we want to try and create this for Emma. See, Emma is spectacular looking, but she can get even better by creating these kind of like HD results. Huh? And what we have is now, she starts to look like an editorial model here. Yeah. And if you just look at it broadly, the best way, by the way, if you can't see from the front, look at the screen, because it gives you a very good 2D, um, 2D image. And if you look at the massive increase now in the height of the zygomatic arch, right? But also look at the increase in the height of her eyebrow. It's huge. This has in lifted the brow because it's further expanding the orbicularis fibers. And because this is expanded, it's weaker. Frontalis becomes more powerful. We have brow lifting. Okay, very good. Now show me a smile. When she smiles, she closes this eye and she keeps this one open. Right? We don't want to have closed eyes on smiling because you're supposed to have your eyes open um, and look happy, not sleepy. Right? Okay, this way. So now we're going to do the medial cheek. 0 0.2 is perfect. Actually, come forward, Emma. Thank you. Now chin down. You can see here... <coughs> She has projection and emptiness, emptiness, projection, and then she has the depression of the zygomatic retaining ligament. Can you see that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a lateral blending injection and then one in front for female beautification, and then we're going to go here. Okay, so if this is CK1, it's in three points. Yeah, okay, back. In America, it's V1. Okay, sorry, darling. Now, did you see that? Mm -hmm. Right, I'm, I'm, I skipped over the top border of the zygoma. If I injected there, I'm potentially at risk because I'm actually in the, in the fibers of the, of the temporalis muscle, and that's a risk. So always make sure you're on the bone. Change the orientation, go down there. Now I'm fixed. Only just 0 0.05, just a blending injection to make sure they don't have that lateral border to the cheek augmentation. <clears throat> you know, a lot of times when I see patients who've had cheek injections, they have almost this barrier. <laughs> when they smile, they bulge here, and this is empty. No one took care of this part here. Okay, very good. And now for the, the beautification point for the woman. The lateral eyebrow just open that for me, thanks. Thanks. Lateral eyebrow, like this, and the upper tragus line, like this, okay? So that puts me right here. Okay. Do you want more? No, that's fine. That's good. So just lateral to that, thank you. So this will make her look more glamorous by just going here. Okay, very good. Just a zero one. I did say that if you do that to any woman, you'll make them more beautiful just by doing that point. Mold. And now what I'll do is these three injections, my finger is going to join them together to make a linear definition all the way towards the, uh, the oral commissure, so I'll show you this. If you look at any of these people like Kate Moss or the supermodels, they will have a line that connects their superior tragus to the oral commissure, right? And that's because what we do is I cut in a, um, a cavity, a uh, shading, 
that connects the two because I create a light above. Watch this now. Come forwards. Let's look on the screen. You see that? So it's an illusion. It's an illusion of shading which has been created by lighting which is caused by projection. So it's like makeup, isn't it? She looks like she's had contouring makeup here. Here? I'll tell you what, she walked in pretty good, didn't she? You don't realise how much someone needs until you actually perfect them. And you compare the two sides and you realise that this is massively deficient, right? Okay, good, let's go. Volux, <coughs> we're still in session one. Okay, so we're going to do her structure in the jaw. So look, um, first of all, this hyaluronic acid has very short chains and the cross linkage is very high. The molecular weight is 25 milligrams per ml, volume is 20, right? So with only five milligrams per ml of increase of molecular weight, there is a massive increase in cross linkage, which means that despite the fact that the viscosity is not that much higher, the, um, the cohesivity is huge. And what that means is that all the molecules will want to hold on to each other. So when we look at it like this and try and pour it out, it stays together. You know what this is like? A whole load of strong men that are holding on to each other hand and foot, and it doesn't want to let go. See, it takes that much weight for it to fall off. Whereas if you put in a particular or a non-linked product, you put one ball in, it'll just fall off. Look, even that doesn't want to fall off this. If you look at its performance and behavior now in the tissue and on the bone like this, look how it will want to tower up. And it will create columns or, if you like, pyramids, which are vertical. And it stays in this form, right? Despite pressure and maybe muscular activity around there, if you try and stress it, it'll retain its position, right? So it's a monster. Like a, it's basically super voluma. It's sort of um, been taking anabolic steroids or something like that. Okay, come this way. So first injection, angle of the jaw. Now I'm demarcating the angle of the jaw here. I'm going to go within a one centimeter square. So this is typically the site that we want to be in. We're going to go down and bone. So once you're on the bone here, you should aspirate because you have the deep fibers of the masseter muscle. And then I'm going to place, well, between 0 0.1 and 0 0.3 cc. And the objective of this injection is to try and create improved lateral uh, pull. But also, I want her to have pinpoint projection. It's very attractive to have a good angle, but also to have almost like a light shade, then light and then shade. Right, so this almost needs to come out slightly. It's how the girls will do the makeup anyway. Okay, good. And then what I'll do is again, high definition molding, above and below. And now like this. Wow, this is quite incredible. Look how the entire face shape has changed. So I've triangulated her. So I've made her into a beautiful heart shaped face. And on this side, she has this degree of sagging and uh, drawn uh, appearance. Okay, good. We're not going to go here because it's too dangerous. We're going to go here. Okay, and forwards to the chin. Okay. This is the pre sulcus from here to here. So from here to there. And one in between. So we're going to go on the bone in all of those three points and put three little balls in. So touch the bone, typically 0.1 cc, and again 0.1 cc, and again 0.1 cc. Now what I'm doing is I'm creating better harmony between the chin and the jaw, um, <clears throat> but I've got three balls that don't have a relationship with each other yet. But right now we're going to make them family, okay? So they're going to kiss each other and become into like one little sausage, okay? But the thinner the sausage here, the better. Because you don't want to have it to be too um, 
lumpy because it can be visible on animation. Now, with those three injections, what I did was I also hydrodissected the DAO off the bone because I was touching the periosteum. So mold, mold, mold like this and fuse them together. Right now, watch this. Every woman's jawline should have high definition and ideally be sharp, okay? This is the trend at the moment, is this ultra HD jawline, right? Come forwards. You see what happens? She has this incredible takeoff through here. And you know what? She's, hey, when she walked in, I think she's spectacular, but she, I would never have said that she's jowly. <laughs> but now, sadly, that's the truth. We're she was jowly. <laughs> she was jowly, right? Because when I correct this, it shows, it highlights just how heavy she was on this side, okay? And by the way, again, this is, I'm, not, I'm not doing this to, sh to show off or for you to show off. You're amazing, right? So show the patient after every injection how amazing you are. You're adding value to your service. And the retention is going to become even greater. If you don't do that, you just become like every other Tom, Dick and Harry. And, you know, there's no separation or there's no point of difference. Yeah, you need a USP. Okay, so have a look at this now at 45 degree. <clears throat> it's spectacular. And if we talk about light and shade, here's the letter C. Here's the number three. Can you see the number three now emerging? Uh, she has a light shade back into light again, and now into a deep shade on this side. Have a look at this side. She has no interest on this side. It's flat. All right. Good. There are other endpoints which I find really interesting. The brow is increased in height further, the lateral canthus is up also. Because this is tugging, the nose has also changed slightly. The oral commissure has already started to lift. And uh, if we look at animation, big, big smile. Closure, open, no crow's feet, crow's feet lines. Um, she has a big bulge, little bulge. Look at the lower cheek right it. Can you see that? Already virtually improved, on, gone on this side virtually. Okay, fabulous. It, by the way, I found in America, they hate this. What, why? There's just some, I totally is it? Totally hate it. Yeah, but why? It, it's like I a real, know. it's a I devil, isn't it? Means it reminds them of their grandmother. Right, the yeah, recording. yeah. They hate it, yeah, yeah. Well, they so hate having them. They hate they having them, yeah. 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 Almost as much as the lines on the upper left. Yeah, but don't you think that in America, <laughs> the standard approach is to inject them? It's awful. Right, there you go. Right, so there's the, there, this is the way how to do it in terms of treating the cause. Okay, now we're going to have a lot of fun because we're going to make this side continue to look sad whilst this one is going to look overtly happy but not too over-contented. You don't want to make people look contrived. If there's arrogance in anyone's face, there's immediate disengagement. So we're going to respect the 12 to 14 degree rule here and not push it up too high. So we'll stay with Volux, <coughs> thank you. And now I'm gonna myomodulate the middle part of the DAO belly. DAO is, originates here on the bone and it has an insertion here into the modiolus. So if I inject here on the bone, we're gonna stretch the hell out of that muscle, it's gonna switch off. Then this switches off, this engages. So back onto the bone. Do aspirate, because you have got the mental frame and medial to you. and just mold it medially underneath the DAO. What you're doing is you're just kind of flattening it out. <clears throat> you don't want a tower of, uh, of the product there. You just want to have a, a sort of a, like an oval shaped uh, structure. So it just has enough power to push up. Do you think you can um, inject the mental frame and the patient will jump out of the seat? If you inject the mental frame and the patient will punch you. Yeah. So there's, there's a good safety net there. Um, it is a sharp, I, I did it yesterday actually. Uh, no, you know why? Because I was just chasing too far medial because there was a big fossa there. They have an electricity that goes up to the teeth. You know, they have electricity that goes up to the teeth. So it should be, that should be quite a peaceful injection, really. Now, what I'm going to do is now, we're going to go now just into the sub cube over the top and just bridge the gap of the lateral labiumental crease. So let's have a look at what happens to oral commissure. Just come forward. So she's now, look at that beautiful tilt. Now show me her smile, please. Look at this. 
This lip is hanging down, right? And this one now is rotating upwards really nicely. Lower cheek lines, no lines. Stabilization of the hyperactive muscles. Show me a kiss now. Deformity and stability, right? All my modulatory. It's outrageous. Okay, let's go back. So um, we've finished session one. She's going to go home now and earn some. Uh, you need to save some pennies. And uh, you need to save for the next session, which is going to be vol lift. Look at that. There's my girl. So we're going to continue this strategy. You, you use one, one syringe of each? Yeah. Per side? Yeah, per side, yeah. That's typically, you know, that's my stand. Look, she's exceptional because she's already very good. Even if she was a bit worse, you'd still get away with that. But you need to be then a bit more reserved with it. Quantities like zero three, you knocked out a zero two. You know, I did one one one. You know, I'd do a little bit less possibly. So, How often did you have patients say after this, "I'm happy, I don't"? Or t- after session after one. After session one. No, you know why? They're greedy. Because <laughs> you start teasing someone like that, mm-hmm. and you put in the carrot dangling in front of their face, they want to eat more. So, because they know they can achieve more. Because we've had a frank discussion about all of the other points. I mean, how many? I don't know how many I points we. Don't stop now. No, of course not. <laughs> oh, then they'll go and That's they'll work. No, no, then they'll go and do the work overtime, and you know the, that sofa that they ordered, they'll cancel the order so they can afford this, um, or they'll just you know nick the husband's credit card or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so you know, this is the thing. It's about the main restriction with all these patients is typically because they have no idea what they can achieve because they haven't seen that yet. And even if they were sitting opposite someone with that result in a restaurant, do you think that person would have told them they had injections? No way. They want to keep it as their secret. So when you look at someone and they don't look injected, but they look incredible, they probably took excellent treatment because then you can't tell they've had anything done. Um, So this is the, it's it's actually a bit of a um, enigma, the whole thing. Okay, now we're going to continue the injections to the midline in the labiomental crease. Now we must stay in the sub Q. If you go deeper than the sub Q, number one, you'll be in the, in the gingival sulcus. You'll be in the mouth, right? So that's, that's not cool. Um, the other thing is you have the inferior labial artery that runs just underneath the muscle here. So there you go. Now what that's going to do is this injection here, it has a, it has a, a, a two-dimensional effect. It's, it has polar effects in the chin and the lip. When I put in Volift here in a, in a linear organization like that to the midline, there's a surface tension which is both directions. So in a speedboat that goes through the water like this, the waves will spread either side. Now, the wave in this direction pushes the upper lip in and the wave in that direction pushes the chin down, so that's desirable. But the lower lip has an inversion, which can be a good thing in someone who has sulking. You know, with the mandibular deficiency. So forward. Can you see that how this is more sulky than this, right? And also now, show me a kiss. Look, she has excessive pouting, and this is now the correct amount of pouting. Relax. Now smile without teeth. So she has a nice upward elevation and now smile with teeth. Look at this. That is incredible. Fake and genuine smile. And that's what I was talking about, about Maya modulating the uh, expression. Uh, smile again. Because this, this fakeness of showing a lot of black triangle, right? This is not acceptable. I've narrowed her right in and I've increased the height of the vector of the oral commissure. Okay. Now we'll do the oral commissure itself. Stay with that. Good, thank you. And back. That's great. Subcutaneous injection. If you want to be really cute here and just give a little flick, separate the upper and lower vermilions, pop a drop in between the two, and just suspend the corner in that position like this. So you see how she has a beautiful little sharp corner. This side is all heavy and uh, sagging. You can take a look with the mirror, by the way, because you'll love this bit, because this is, this is what you hated the most. Yeah. You see this? All right, mm, good. Yeah. Okay, now for the fun part, piriform. <clears throat> Have a low down. In this country, I'm not allowed to inject the luma here. 
I think for the right reasons. I did have a 62-year-old patient who had uh, cardiovascular disease and a cigarette smoking, and I injected here with Voluma, and six hours later she called me with discoloration, okay? Late compression. Come this way. So, pinch, buccal maxillary retaining ligament. So then do you only do bul bullets in this area? No, the no. If I've got a patient who is retruded, mm -hmm. <coughs> Asians, um, subcontinent, yeah, India, um, Pakistan, uh, they have a similar situation. Also, sometimes in the Middle East, we see, don't we? Basically, if they've got wide nostrils, you'll always, try and, you'll always try and push them forward here with more. Okay, so pull the artery out of the way. Look here, so this is the ligament here. This is the artery position here. So you have ligament and artery. This is even scary for me. You know, when I look at it like that, there's no way that I will ever follow this up here. Because if I end up in here, straight away, you're straight into the, into the super highway. So I'll turn it this way. I'm going to pull the artery out of the way. Down onto the bone, sorry. And then we're going to do a big old suck, at least three seconds. And then we're going to inject, typically 0 0.3 cc. And this is how you're going to um, mitigate the, uh, the nasolabial fold. And you'll also stop the hyperdynamism of a snarling, right? See? Overcorrection. Can you see that? That's a ball of honey. But that's cool, because I'm going to use this to my advantage. So I'm going to push the honey now in towards the ala, and I'm going to drive the ala dome upwards. So you can see already, look how the nostril width is narrowing. Can you see this? See, the nose configuration has changed. And also, if you look at the NLF, look, she has ala fossa and nasolabial fold. And it's completely gone. One injection, 0 0.3 cc. So I don't need to have a dangerous injection. I don't need to start messing around, rubbing around like this, having bruising, pain, etc. It's just cured like this. Now let's have a look at animation. Show me, oh, sorry, sweetie. Okay, okay show me first of all um, a, um, a snarly nose. Snarl. Relax. Good. Do it again. Look how much she bulges and how she's quieter, relax. And then also, if you can give me a big smile. There you go. Huge bulging and much more calmer now. Uh, no one wants to have bulging in the cheek when you smile. It's think, something that we're trying to always minimize in the patients. Okay, wonderful, that's easy. Show me, let's just have a look at the indirect effect on orbicularis oris muscle. Show me a gentle kiss, more. Right, isn't that amazing? Less lines, more lines. You didn't even touch the lip yet. We're going to come on to that later. But already you're starting to cure that problem. We're going to stay with Volift and the medial cheek. Okay, eyes up please, Anna. Look to the ceiling. Now, amazing. What we're going to do is we're going to deal with the tear trough and the lateral and cheek junction. So first of all, keep your eyes up. That's it. This little dot that I've just marked out is lateral to her mid-pupillary line. Therefore, it's safe. There is no artery in this location. Okay. Sorry, sweetie. Keep looking up. Right. This is her mid pupillary line here. Right, that's the mid pupil line. This dot here that I've put here is lateral to the mid pupil line. There is no chance of an arterial structure in that location. Because the infraorbital um, artery. It emits its contents this direction. It doesn't come back on itself. So you always need to think about the origin and the distribution of a neurovascular bundle. So her tear trough has already improved hugely, right? So I can't really see her tear trough when she's in horizontal gaze. Close your eyes. It's impossible to see it, right? Some people inject tear troughs with the patient's eyes closed. It's stupid. You can't see anything. Open your eyes, look up. Right now I can see the demarcation of the orbicularis retaining ligament. Look up, 
So I can see requirement and requirement, right? So always have them lie back, eyes vertical. And if they're worried about the needle coming towards their eye, come from here. Don't go like this. Come like the silent assassin underneath. You can't, you can't see the needle, can you? No. So you need to come like this. Keep looking up. And just keep it out of her visual field. Good. Keep looking up, darling. So just 0 0.05 to 0 0.1. Tiny amount. Okay. Always on bone. So then take my little ball of honey, tiny ball of honey, and just push it this way towards the tear trough. See, look, it's flowing ahead of me because it's so soft. I think in America this is uh, off-label, is off isn't it? Vol volu? Oh, yeah. Yeah, very off-label. Off so I use this as a sort of um, a flattening agent. It's a bit like, you know, if you're rolling pastry in the kitchen, you can put a tea cloth over the top and then it get a much more smoother finish. Same. Right, let's have a look at the trough now. This should be virtually cured. Here's the uh, untreated one. Diagonal dark circle. Treated. Gone. See you later. Okay, so she has two stories here, tiredness and restedness. Okay, and also, this is sad and this is happy. All right, okay, let's go back. So now we're going to go... Oh, do you know what, darling? She's very bony. Let's go volite. So she has virtually no soft tissue coverage. <clears throat> She's skin, muscle, bone. That's it. So I've got nowhere to hide with volbella, so we're going to use volite. Okay, Look, keep looking up. The lateral lychee junction is somewhat of a linear, uh, or it's actually a triangular deficit. So you can see here, if I stress it, it goes from here up to here. So this is the plane that you're injecting. This is the, this is the linear plane you're injecting on. That's the cutaneous insertion of the orbicularis ligament. Now, if you inject this way, the likelihood is that you may end up on this side, okay? You may end up here. Or you may end up there. Right now, both of them will give a bad result. This one will provoke edema, okay? And make you look more puffy. And this one will make the eye bag look worse. So you've got to be actually on the line. Now, this is an aeroplane. And this is the runway. So we want to land the plane on the runway. You have to follow the orientation of the line. So we're going to pull this way, get down onto the bone and just inject. And there is nothing here. There's no arterial structure, so you're safe. And I'm going to take that little ball of the volift. You have it in America now? Okay, so just, just, just wet it down, your existing one. And I just push it now upwards towards the lateral canthus. And this lateral canthal ligament, which wants to fall down in age and make the eye look sad, I'm now going to drive upwards using this uh, rheological property of the, of the product, which is basically cohesivity. It's like a glue, like a sticker. So those of you that are wearing wing liner today, eyeliner pencil, you know the score, no? Okay, so basically this drives the lateral canthus up. So it makes the outer part of the eye higher. Just look forward. And you have this amazing almond shape, this feline change here. Plus also, not to mention, she has on this side, she has the depression here. And then the depression is now completely gone on this side, right? Good. Uh, let's do, what's left now? Forehead? Forehead, lips, and nose. Has she got a bony forehead too? Yes, she has. Let's go with that. <clears throat> right, you can see my, my points, can't you, in the forehead? Look. There. And there. That's it. This part is already done in the temple. Either I'm getting shorter, or this bed is too tall. Right. Let's have a look. There you go. <clears throat> okay, bevel down. Bevel down, why? 
because it's going to bone. And if it's up, the back end of the bevel could be poking out of the galia, and then I'm going to be in the vessel, right? So this, take care. So bevel down, get on the bone, and make sure that you really push hard to get onto the bone. So you can, it's like a pop, pop, crunch sensation. Two pops is skin and muscle, and the crunch is the galia, which is a thick, fibrous uh, uh, sheet. Put a little ball into there and spread the olive oil underneath the galia like this, okay? Now, just by doing that alone, it molds beautifully. See how it just disappears? Look what happens immediately to the perception of her depression, you see? She looks now much more feminized. See how she's softer, much softer there. Touch the bone two-hand aspiration. If your fingers aren't long enough to do a one-hand special, which is it's quite hard to do actually, just use two hands, it's much safer. Don't be afraid to overcorrect, okay? Um, they're not going to end up looking like a bull or a unicorn because it's very, very soft. But if you do put the wrong product in here, you will have bumps and lumps for sure. She has a huge hole here, right? And if we look at on profile there, you can see that there's a flattening with the depression here. If you look at her here in 45, now we restore convexity, very feminine, very beautiful. It's very um, innocent and it's uh, girly, you know what I mean? Uh, if you now lift the eyebrow, ek, amazing. See my modulation of the frontalis? Watch this again, lift. Lines, no lines, right? Why has that happened? So, people say, oh Raj, it's the usual nonsense, lidocaine. Nonsense, right? Because we're behind the galia. There's no penetration of lidocaine outside of the galia. What happened was, I stretched the frontalis fibers. Now they can't contract so much. And so we have less activity. So she needs less Botox in the forehead. Simple. Again, lift. Amazing. Good. And do this particularly for the patients who have this persistent crease here. That's, you can't get rid of with Botox without dropping them. Yeah. Right, we're going to finish with nose and lips. Um, and we may, may also rebalance the chin. The nose, upper lip, lower lip, and the chin is in a, is in a complex relationship within, within, within each other. It's a four-way, basically. So when the nose becomes projected, this needs to be projected. When the nose needs to be projected and this gets projected, then this and this needs to get, get projected too. Breathe out slowly. Breathe out slow, slow, slow. Well done. Good. 0 0.25 cc. Let's see if we can actually do injection of rhinoplasty with that amount, okay? And how long it takes. Good. Come. Yeah. Perfect. 0.25. This is... Is the what, sorry? Which, uh, which are you Volure. Volure. Breathe. That's it. Don't hold your breath. Right, so that's the hardest part for the patient is the dissection of the two ligaments. You have one here at the junction of the lower lateral cartilage and the upper, and then the upper lateral cartilage and the nasal bone. So what you do is basically you use the cannula as a sort of template to give the result you're imagining to do. Uh, Cut the, the black triangle facing upwards. Retain the product between your index finger and thumb and then just gently introduce it in the, in the height that you want to. Okay, nice and relaxed, well done. By the way, if you're off the midline here, don't assume that a 25 gauge cannula could not get inside the dorsal nasal artery. Right. We had it in Lebanon, right? Yeah. So the glabella comp, uh, depression is done. Now look, I'm at the uh, I'm at the the lower margin here of the uh, the dorsal hump. So just lay it in, nice and steady. And just separate the skin off the fascia here. You never should go through the smas, by the way, ever. Always keeping uh, in the sub cue. See where I am? Just under the skin here. Very good. Well done, darling.
and then just a little bit in the tip like this just to give her a bit of height. Perfect, thank you. Now, we're going to mould it in. And this is the beauty. If, if I'm working with honey, it's easy to mould, isn't it? Now, if you're putting something thick in there, you're going to have to work it hard. She uses Juvederm Mulcher 3, right? Mm. It's just, for me, it's too rigid. I can't really, uh, you know, mould it artistically, yeah? We've got a big dorsal one, like we Now, what, what I'm going to do here is, look, pinch. And I form a Christmas tree. Nice, thin, tall Christmas tree, which is thinner at the top, wider at the bottom. And then mould it either side of the dorsal hump, like so. Sorry, darling. And then take your two thumbs and do this. Make a seagull shape, a medial super orbit. And don't you think that your patient that's paying, I don't know, two, three thousand pounds for a total face, and when you do this for her for free, do you not think she's going to love you more? Forever. <laughs> <laughs> and that was no skin off my back. 0 0.2 cc, it's a gift. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's, but look, come on. You need to throw, in, throw them a bone every now and again, yeah? And I think that then this is something she'll never forget because she never had a, she never had a straight nose in the whole of her life. It's about you know how much value you're giving for how much uh, cost. You take a good look at that, darling. Brand new nose. Yeah. Yeah, it's ridiculous, isn't it? I didn't really notice it was bad before. Well, I notice everything. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you only wanted four yeah, things, absolutely. didn't you? You're getting twenty-six. <laughs> I'm not even finished yet. <laughs> Right, lips. Right, now, by the way, when you, uh, when you glamorize a woman, when you glamorize a beautiful woman, so you take a, a beautiful woman and you uh, take out the sadness, the tiredness, you take out the sagging, you take out the, any degree of anger, then you start to reevaluate once you've done those things and you lifted the brow. Uh, look in the camera. You open the eye, you change the canthal axis, you make the cheek very attractive, like, you know, almost like editorial. You then, in the 45 degree, she looks very, very high impact beauty. This is someone that could do, get paid for modeling, you know, editorial. Then, you might want to reevaluate your decision about lips. Because Angelina, her huge lips can only be that big because she has excellent structure everywhere. If you want to put big lips on a weak face, you, you've got no chance. Now, so do you think that Volbella is the right decision? Or do you think that she can now take Volo or Volift? Thank you. <coughs> so we change. So that's exactly my point, is that you, your plan can't be static. It has to be dynamic with the changes that are occurring in her face. So what I need to do before we do this is... We need to look at a profile. Look this way. Right now, don't you think that those lips are weak now compared to her structural changes? Right, watch this. So this line between the nasal tip and the chin, the demarcation should be for the upper lip, but the lower lip should be 2.5. The upper lip should be 3.5 millimeters away. It's more than that, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So she needs advancement and eversion as well as having increased height. So, of course, Volura is the natural. We're changing the plan, darling. Yeah. Good. Yeah. She deserves she amazing did. lips, yeah. Yeah. Sexy. Sexy lips, yeah. Okay, right there. So, really simply, we're going to use transcutaneous injection technique, staying in the subcutaneous or submucosal level, never going through the muscle. Um, try and optimize sharpness and definition and detail by keeping as superficial as you can, particularly around the glog outline point, or you want to do, you know, the medial vermilion or the uh, the philtrum. Close your eyes. That's it. Breath in, and out slow. Good. Well done. Nice and relaxed. What you want to do with the patient is always try and 
inject them during exhalation, not inspiration, because they actually have virtually no pain. If you catch them on inspiration and they do this, it really hurts. But if you get them on, there's very little pain. You'll see immediately now how the light reflection changes in the, in the lip border. And also, she's sharper. See, this is blunt, it's dull. It's kind of disinteresting. This becomes much sharper. And then we're gonna do her, uh, her philtrum. Come back this way, thank you. Kiss, relax. So if you wanna identify where the glug alkaline point is, you need to ask them to kiss, because they sharpen at their apex. Breathe out, slow, 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 good. It doesn't hurt, does it? No, I'm just, I think it's the no, sort no, of thing. No, no, does it, does it hurt? It actually hurt that much, no. Yeah, yeah. It's less if psychological, you do, I'm sorry. <laughs> you'll notice there's no cream, right? There's no anesthesia, nothing, you right? You dental block? Never, nothing. No, no, that's even worse because if you do a dental block, you lose your innovation and therefore you can't assess dynamics. I want full control over four dimensions. So, uh, if you have a look here. Now, show me a kiss. More. Look, see it stabilizes all this activity, relax. And then she still has a textural weakness here. So have a lie back, thank you. Open. This is the medial tubercle. That needs to be slightly everted. So we're gonna do one more. Breathe out, very good. Nice, relax, good, good, good. <coughs> and pinch. So you see, you don't need to be in the vermilion to create this sharp ridge of definition. Sorry, sweetheart. Okay. okay, right now. What happens with this injection is that it creates this reciprocal depression here, see? It's this one. Mm -hmm. And the most commonest uh, cause for exacerbating this is sleeping. Look, when she sleeps and snuggles herself into the pillow, she does this. So it should have this, that kind of effect. So we want it to be stretched. And it's really easy, just do this. Well done. And it's just gonna be just subcutaneous. And now kiss, nice, beautiful, relax. See, she has one weakness there, so we'll use Volite. This one, don't yes. Volite. Just need me to uh, No. Kiss again. Relax, relax. So you're just putting in tiny, tiny little micro sheets here and just allowing you to stabilize the skin. Thank you. And if you have enough volume, but you want to create gloss and um, blush, changing color, right? I'll show you how to do that. So we use a thin product like, uh, like Volite. <clears throat> and look, she has dehydrated lips. See that? Do you do this? Mm. Oh, I can tell. Yeah. You need to stop doing that. Mm. Because all these little tiny scars, uh, oh, I'm going to fix it now, but then yeah. don't do it in the future. I do have really dry lips. Always. It's yeah. not going to be dry anymore. Okay. So we're going to hydrate her. Um, we're going to draw in fluid into the submucosa and we're going to uh, deal with all this issue um, but you know some countries that I go to they say erase the lip wrinkles what do you think about that I think a lip wrinkle is normal right it's too much sometimes like looks tight it looks like a sausage in a skin right and we don't want that so I, I'm gonna obviously I'm gonna hydrate her but I, I don't want to get rid of them completely thank you open the mouth Thank you. First of all, we'll do the tubercle, medial tubercle here. So, going through the skin and staying in the submucosa. And now watch this, I'm just behind the mucosa. And what I do is now, see, I drop it down. You see that? I rotate it out and open again. More, thank you. And squeeze it into the vermilion like this. Close. You see, immediately she has more height and also 
Were you injecting the entire Yes, no, only until here. Oh, no, not here, otherwise you get, end up getting a ball there. And then touch more. So now we're going to go into the midline. There's two types of lower lip in the medial third. You have got, no, she. So she has like Angelina's lips, right? So she's got a midline septum, and then she's got the two little pillows either side, the medial tubercles. That's quite like baby lip, yeah? It's very attractive, very young. But if you don't have it, she doesn't have it, don't try and put it there because it just will not suit the anatomy. Um, and people are trying to do this, you know, I commonly see, they put a Q-tip here. Floss. Yeah, or floss. Okay. And it's just, I think it's ridiculous. You know what you're trying to do? You're trying to force a square through a circle. So don't do that. <laughs> huh? Keyhole pal. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, with the triangular, which... It's, it's, quite, it's quite porno, I think. You know, I don't like... I, yeah, it's too... Uh, no, no, I don't think... Not, see, she's, for, she's elegant, right? So I don't think that's right. Okay, come this way. Please don't make no, me porn. No, no, no porn. <laughs> okay, right. Right, relax. Good. In this country, we have something called Love Island, and that's how they look on there. Okay, this way. There. You see that? I just pop it out. So I actually am getting rid of the septum. And then, close. Done. So that's what we have now. One third, two thirds, one third, two thirds, restored ratios. Yeah, geometrically perfect. And now we're going to have a look at her profile again. I think she's arrived. This is a final art. This is now much better. Much better, yeah? Okay, this is now the finished article. That's beautiful. Okay, now look here. This angle here should be 120, 130 degrees, 95 to 105. The projection of the chin should be in keeping with the distance to the line. 2.5 millimeters lower lip, 3.5 millimeters upper lip. She's on the point, which means no chin injection, right? Because if I do this, I need to go back to the lips, don't I? But what if she said, you know what, I want more lip? Then I say, I'm the expert, and I, and I tell you when to stop, mm -hmm. right? This is, by the way, this calculation here, this is exactly the tool that you use to tell a young girl who comes in for more lip injection to leave without treatment because you say you're already past the point. By the way, what happens is it's actually worse than this. They don't respect the 2.5 and 3.5 millimeter rule. They actually have lips that go past the line. Their lips enter the room before they do. Lips and boobs first, mm -hmm. then they arrive. <laughs> so, no, but they are difficult to treat because they think they're self-righteous. They think that they are right. And that's how I say I'm not treating you. Without having a fight. Well, I was getting at yeah. a little bit more than, than you would maybe add a little bit. Yeah, pressure. okay. Then, we, then we're into a different ball game. But then they become overly glamorized, I think. Yeah? That's like a, um, almost ev overtly sexualized. And I don't know. I think, unfortunately, the young women of today, they are moving in that direction. Um, you end up with the practice that you deserve, ultimately. And... If you want to specialize in that kind of thing, I think that's how you will end up. By the way, there's so much of that going on. I'm not knocking. Are you knocking that? I don't think. No? Well, it's well, horses for courses. Extreme, yeah, right? and also what your market is, you know? These girls or these practices, no, but no, you do it properly. Like, he's, he's, not, he's saying, yeah. actually, this is correct. Yeah. If you want to do this you and this, you have to do that. this, right? I also, do more the, of it than you, don't I? Yeah, she does a lot of the young ones. Um, so, look. Um, projection, 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 that's fine. The other benefit of that, by the way, in a young patient is that you minimize the nose size. Yeah? If you do this and this and this, the nose looks relatively smaller because those four structures, they're in a tight relationship. Right, let's summarize, shall we? Because we're finished now on this side. So, in summary, look in the camera, thank you. So what we have here is feminization and convexity of the forehead, brow lifting. We have lifting of the lateral canthus, and we also have now improvement in the canthal axis, deleting the tear trough, glamorizing and making more attractive a cheekbone structure so we have light and shade, light and back into shade here. Um, the nose is narrow, the nasolabial fold has uh, completely disappeared, the oral commissure is up, this one is down. The jawline here is spectacular and straight, high definition with nice sharp edges. Angle of the mandible, 94 to 100 degrees. 
And then if you look at her animation, so we'll start off by looking at her lifting her brow. Lines, uh, there's lines and no lines, relax. Huge smile, uh, small eye, big eye, relax, smile. Crow's feet, more, 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 big smile. Crow's feet and no crow's feet, relax. Smile, bulging, less bulging, relax. Okay, now we look at the mouth, smile. Teeth, fake smile, genuine smile, black triangle, no black triangle, relax. Smile again. Lower cheek lines, no lower cheek lines, relax. Kiss. Perioral lines, no lines, relax. Kiss. Deformity, stabilization, relax. And this is going to be pretty cool. Look in the camera. Look how the sagging is huge on the other side. And look how I've stuck her skin and soft tissue onto her skull. This stuff is sticky, right? It's cohesive, so it's adhesive. It's like a glue, right? And that's going to stay like that for at least a year. And that's why these people get addicted how to this. How long does it last? At least, we, we get, well, four looks is two years. Okay, right. And then look into here. Perfect. And now we're going to have a look at her obliques and her laterals. So this is the left <coughs> oblique here. You can see here the really dramatic light, shade, light, and shade. And this side has nothing of interest. In fact, actually, she has got only negative vectors visible. And now let's have a look at the lateral one last time, just in summary. Correct nasofrontal transition, 95 to 105 degrees, upper lip, lower lip, and chin in perfect alignment. And then we look at the distances here. 2.5 lower lip, 3.5 upper lip, and that's, that's your job done. All right, brilliant.